Hey guys, my name is Frank, and this is my workshop. Hi folks, welcome to part one of the Cup Cadet Mini Motor Grader build. Uh, the full uh, video was uh, an hour long, so it seemed excessive. So I split it into two parts. So this is part one, it's about 25 minutes long. And here uh, we'll cover the um, start of the tractor build, um, the initial donor tractors, disassembly, reassembly, building the drive line, mounting the engine, fabricating the main frame, power steering, front wheels, getting tires on the wheels, and um, getting to the point of a rolling chassis. Uh, the final um, component of part one will include the selection of the a mold board or the blade and um, then in part two we'll get into the traction frame which supports the mold board the hydraulic cylinder mounts um, the decisions made there about um, um, the fabrication of the mounting points and how everything will work and hooking up the hydraulics and um, getting to a completed and functioning grader so, um, I hope you enjoy the, the video and um, make sure to check out part two. I got so many requests for a, an actual build video for the Cub Cadet Mini Motor Grader that I felt uh, it might be helpful if I put together um, what I can. Now I didn't video the cons actual construction, did not have cameras at the time, um, but I have thousands of photographs. So in this video I'm going to use many of the still photos I took during construction and by providing some narration I hope to be able to give you enough information about the build that you possibly could attempt such a such a build yourself. Um, I don't have any special background or experience in fabrication or welding. I'm self-taught. I've been a lifelong woodworker but have been getting more involved in metalworking since I started collecting Cub Cadets about 10 years ago. Here's a, one, a Model 149 from the early 1970s. I'm bringing it home. And this is one of the two tractors which will be donors for the motor grader. And um, the other tractor is a 129. Now here's the 149 in the foreground and the 129 in the background. The 149 has the auxiliary hydraulic ports on the hydrostat so that makes it capable of operating all of the hydraulics on the motor grader. So here are the two tractors. I'm beginning to um, remove the engines starting disassembly of the tractors. I'm just using an engine hoist here to lift the engines. The engines weigh about 125 pounds or so. Once um, the engines have been removed, um, then you ha I've also removed the seat and fender pan and foot rests and um, most of the rest of the components leaving just the frame and the dash. In um, this photo, this is the um, 129, and this is going to be the donor for the rear axle. The frame is marked behind the dash with a vertical line, and that will be where the frame is cut. Um, I just used a um, grinder with a cutoff disc to cut the frame at that point. Um, before I actually did the cut, I did service both of the rear axles, the transmissions, change the hydraulic fluid. Here's the um, looks like the 129 getting the rear end drained. 
Um, so that's done on both um, axles in order to get them ready for, for the build. Uh, I've got the 129's frame cut here at this point. The frame supported with some jack stands and a, and a floor jack. So you can see that the frame is severed right behind um, the dash. So this is in preparation for um, welding this to the rear of the other tractor's frame. So here you can see that the two frames are um, al being aligned, um, have some jack stands. The forward axle, the axle for the 149, does not have any tires or wheels um, on the hubs. So um, the next thing I did was use some angle iron and some C clamps in order to align the two frame segments in preparation for welding them uh, together. So you'll see the angle iron here clamped to the, the frame to try to keep them straight. Started welding the two frames together um, and welding the angle iron across the top for reinforcement. Uh, I got some questions why I didn't do a zigzag or slanted cut um, back when I had some other friends commenting on my uh, methodology here. I didn't feel like it. the strength requirements uh, warranted the uh, complexity and I also was very close to the front axle here so I didn't want to risk um, the attachment to that. So. Here you can see the welding going on. I've also reinforced the um, lower part of the frame with a piece of plating that's been welded. So this um, should provide a, a plenty strong um, connection for the, the two frames. In order to link the two hydrostats together I needed a long connecting rod. Here I've cut the um, existing Cub Cadet rod and welded in a sh long segment about 18 inches long. Just use the angle iron here to align the two pieces. A lot of work was involved in updating the um, hydrostat trunnions. Here are the trunnion um, spring cage is has been weld repaired and you can see the link arm underneath there working on attaching that to the to that hydrostat. Um, this is just another picture of the other um, hydro's trunnion arm where some weld repair has been done to that rectangular opening. Um, that's a common wear point on older Cub Cadets and that trunnion opening needs to be repaired in most cases. Here you can see the two hydrostats, the one on the left the one on the right, they're the finned aluminum housings there. Um, getting ready to uh, connect them together with a with a common drive shaft. I didn't have any kind of written plans for this build. I was um, most of my work was uh, through mock-ups and making adjustments as I went along. Here I'm just trying the um, engine hood and front grille on the back of the frame to see what it looks like. I, uh, in order to build the um, connections between the two hydrostats I needed some coupling so here I'm at the lathe um, boring out some one inch round stock to make couplings for the 5 8 inch drive shaft. <clears throat> All right, on the rear hydrostat is the drive pulley. Now, in this during the build I used a single pulley, but I've since switched to double pulleys. So, you'll see at the end the double pulley arrangement. Um in the first test kind of proof of concept, I used a single pulley in there. Um pin punches in the pulley holes just to align the holes for where the pins go through. You can see the coupling there on the hydrostat to the left. The hydrostats have front and rear input shafts, so you can connect them end to end um, fairly easily. <clears throat> I'm back here looking at the um, frame and the arrangement of the uh, engine and and hood and front grille, or which is now the rear grille, 
and you'll see some um, metal there that's raised up the hood to clear the engine. This is the engine support frame tacked up on the workbench. This is 2x4 um, rectangular tubing and 2x4 uh, C-channel underneath. And this is to provide a, a better placement for the engine. The engine needs to be raised up above the normal frame rails in order to clear the hydrostat and you can see the trunnion arm there sticking up a little bit. So um, the engine sits down inside the 2x4 rectangular tubing on the edges of the C, of the C channel. I'm still thinking about fenders and whether or not I want fenders, two sets of fenders. I'm just this is just a mock-up trying to decide after uh, some um, soul searching I decided it did not warrant fenders. Fenders you don't see fenders on motor graders. I was going for a scale look in general so I decided not to um, use any fenders for this build. As I went along I tried to keep some paint on the metal as I was working so you'll see that there's um, some yellow paint on many of the parts as they're um, um, added to the frame. Here the drive shaft between the two hydros is fitted and um, an engine which I had rebuilt last year the year before and was sitting on the shelf. It's a 12 horsepower engine out of another Cub Cadet. So I didn't use either of the engines out of the two donor tractors. I still have those. Um, this was a newly overhauled and rebuilt one which I used. You can see it sitting here in the frame and I'm looking at the alignment of the engine to the pulley down below it um, and trying to you know make sure I had it in the in the right right position. As you can see I've abandoned the, the whole fenders um, completely. So I fitted the starter generator which is the black um, cylindrical object there um, which all Cub Cadets, the older Cub Cadets have and um, working on the engine I have a belt in place here kind of test fitting it to see what see what it looks like and how it fits. I've added the carburetor and coil to the engine, so trying to get the engine put back together to the point where it could be it could be run. Um, at this point I have a rolling frame, the hydrostats connected together so an engine would would drive the unit. The last thing I needed was a gas tank and here I've fabricated brackets, support brackets for a Cup Cadet gas tank out of one of the two donor tractors and this is not the normal place it's mounted in the tractor but this is where it is in in the in the grader under the hood so you can see what the rear of the grader looks like it's only got one set of tires and these aren't the tires which actually wound up on the grader uh, unfortunately one headlight is missing in in this picture At this point I've got the engine mounted, the uh, rear grille and hood attached and it's starting to build the frame which supports the front edge of the hood there right behind the seat. I put the fender pan back on and the tunnel cover because I'm getting ready to test drive this um, arrangement basically just to prove out the um, dual hydrostatic drive. Here I've taken a couple of um, spindles from um, trailer, small trailer hubs and I bored them out and welded them over the spindles um, on the Cub Cadet front um, um, kingpin arms or steering knuckles I guess is what they're called, steering knuckles. So that converts the Cup Cadet front wheels to five lug, which is the standard 
um, arrangement for the rear wheels on a Cub Cadet. So here's where I've adapted the front to hold essentially rear wheels. I'm getting ready to build the frame, the main frame, and here I'm bringing in a piece of um, 4x6 steel tubing. This is, um, I think this piece is 12 feet long. It's quarter inch wall, um, weighs, it doesn't weigh that much, maybe 150 pounds or something like that. Um, all right, here I'm placing the battery underneath the seat. I've extended the um, frame. Um, at this point, I've fully committed to no fenders, so the seat had to have a platform, and I've welded a frame, um, a frame of two by four rectangular tubing, and brought it to the same height as the frame underneath the engine. I'm placing the battery, making arrangements to operate the PTO clutch. You can see a lever arm there in front of the PTO, in front of the engine, and doing some wiring so that I can start the engine. Okay, here I've got a cardboard and plywood um, cutout, which is my first mock-up for what the mainframe would look like. I, as I said, a lot of my build process involved building a mock-up or a model and then looking at how it looked and making decisions from that point. Um, so once I was satisfied with that, I began cutting the steel tubing. I used a steel cutting saw in my um, Hitachi miter saw, um, made for a lot of sparks. I do not have a cold cut saw, but um, this worked okay. Once I mitered the um, pieces of 4x6 steel tubing, I laid them out on the floor, you know, just to verify that the miters were um, correct. The two left miters are 45s. Um, and here I begin to weld it up, and it's on the, on the bench here, welded together. Uh, of course, I've ground down and um, smoothed out all, all the welds. All of the joints were um, beveled for, for full penetration. And um, here it is on the bench. It was critical that the miters fit closely and that the frame be flat. So those were the two of the things that I paid a lot of attention to, uh, you know, as well as the you know, overall appearance of, of the frame. At this point, the front of the 149 um, frame is opened up. You can see I've welded a support plate to the underside of the um, tractor's yellow frame. You can see a piece of quarter inch plate there. I'm getting ready to fit the main frame to the tractor's frame. Now the main frame is uh, welded to this quarter inch plate, which is welded to the tractor's frame and runs back about a foot behind that um, bulkhead where the where the white dash tower begins. Um, before I do the welding I'm aligning it, I'm leveling it here with a level trying to make sure that that the frame is in line with the actual tractor frame and I actually pulled a string line the length of the tractor spent a lot of time making sure it was straight because if it were crooked it would just wouldn't look right so it's also important that the front end of it is at the same height as the back end so the center section of the main frame the um, welded 6x4 tubing be level be horizontal so here is the work to uh, make sure that happens. Once it's welded together, it's time for a test drive. So I'm pulling it out. I've got the power steering installed. And so I'm just trying to make sure that um, it balances OK, that the power steering is working, um, and that the turning radius isn't, you know, half a mile. So um, it, and it worked great. I have to say that there were um, no no problems um, with it at this point. I was actually surprised at how well it worked forward and back and turned and you can see I'm just um, playing around with it 
in you know in the driveway so I actually had um, my wife help me with this she filmed the whole thing with my smartphone and um, so it was she was pretty helpful in that respect I you know didn't really have any experience making um, filming my projects at this point um, I spent a lot of time when my kids were young filming them but this is totally totally different okay I'm back in the um, shop and I'm working on the steering geometry here and uh, you know this probably actually happened before that test drive um, trying to get the connection points you see I had to weld another arm onto the left knuckle in order to you know have clearance um, there is a drag link between the two knuckles um, and I'm just looking at the at the steering here and making sure that the cylinder extension works correctly alright so here's just another shot of the tractor you can see how the frame the 2x4 um, steel tubing frame was extended to up underneath the seat and the seat does flip forward it's on a normal Cub Cadet stand here's the power steering valve I uh, went back in and added some steel bracing to it it was a little floppy um, so this power steering came from a later I would guess a maybe early 90s Cub Cadet now I'm beginning to get into more of the cosmetics I've fabricated the dash front and um, the um, access panel in front of the dash there at an angle as well as the foot step um, since I didn't have fenders I needed something to keep you know your feet out of the tires I've masked off the dash itself and I'm painting the tower ye yellow I wound up using caterpillar yellow for um, the paint job on this tractor the cup cadet paints are pretty expensive so I did find large cans of caterpillar yellow at the Ace Hardware store and you can see that I'm painting the frame and um, the main frame and the front axle assembly and the other um, panels that support the controls and and provide access to the the hydraulics the tunnel cover is in place here and painted and um, drop cloths kept most of the paint off the floor but um, I don't have a paint booth or paint area so I did did what I could here all right so now I'm mounting the f um, ball hitch that will hold the front of the traction frame and bolting it to the um, um, front, front assembly, assembly. And, and you can see that the hydraulic hoses were run inside the main frame from the hydraulic uh, steering gear um, in the in the dash here I'm mocking up the mold board this is a Cub Cadet 42 inch blade from a uh, same series as the donor tractors I'm trying to decide whether 42 or 54 inch blade would would fit properly I felt like this blade just did not match the scale of um, of the motor grader it was just too not wide enough I have a 54 inch blade but it's got a hydraulic angle on it and it goes on a different tractor and I didn't want to um, damage that I thought about having one fabricated from a piece of pipe by a local fabricator and then um, I realized that I had a mold board on a rear blade three-point hitch attachment for my Kubota and so I went and pulled that off that frame and stuck it underneath the tractor and it looked great so that was where I committed to using this particular blade and it also solved a mounting problem because it came with a mount that I then was able to adapt from the three-point hitch frame that it came on here is a piece of steel tubing that's actually been 
um, shortened in height uh, and then uh, I've using it I'm on the mill here and getting ready to um, cut some holes through it for the uh, cylindrical shaft which supports the blade here I'm drilling the blade um, circle pinholes so in my initial implementation of the grader used a pin rotate the blade uh, drop the pin in pull the pin rotate the blade drop the pin in just as the blade that came off of um, the way it came off of the Kubota. This is the plate which attaches to the traction frame and we're going to get into the traction frame here and in a couple of pictures but the uh, plate that was attached to the blade mates up with the holes on here so the pin locks the plate. Here you can see the mold board with the um, plate that was just drilled and that rectangular piece of steel tubing with the hole drilled through the middle of it supports the post and so those two plates that um, are then attached to the, the traction frame. Now that we've made a decision on the mold board, the blade that we're going to use, the next step is to build the frame which supports the blade and allows it to be moved around, manipulated, and that's called the traction frame. So in part two we get into the build of the traction frame, all the hydraulics, uh, hydraulic attach attachment points, and um, basically take it from the rolling chassis that we've got now to a, a functioning grader. So uh, check out part two. Um, I appreciate all of the comments on the videos that are on the channel and I hope you enjoyed um, this one. Um, be sure to check out part two and um, where the motor grader is brought to completion. Thanks for watching.